All right, this is Chris with uh, MyCricketForum.com, and in front of us we have the Almighty HTC Evo 3D. First, I'd like to take a second to describe what I went through to get this device. I uh, found it on Craigslist, paid uh, $400 for it. It's actually a good ESN. $400 isn't too bad for a local purchase. Uh, you might be able to find it cheaper on eBay, and you could probably find it even cheaper than that if you went with a bad ESN. Uh, phone. The thing about the good ESN phone is that you'll probably be able to get more money if you uh, sell it later. I'd make a backup of the uh, original settings and I drove this thing with my girlfriend on the back 25 miles through back roads, not on the highway because this thing didn't go fast enough to get this device. So that's about 50 miles total on that thing were completely fried because it was sunny and almost 100 degrees outside. Anyways, moving right along, um, we'll post all the files that you need to download on the tutorial, which will be up shortly after the videos make their way onto YouTube. Uh, definitely visit www.mycricketforum.com, become a member, subscribe to this channel so you can see the uh, new devices that we've been able to put on Cricket. So we're going to hook the device to our computer for the first time. Yeah, we probably have something in common here. You haven't probably flashed an Evo 3D to Cricut, and we haven't either. So we'll see how this works. We already have the HTC Diag drivers installed from the original Evo, the HTC Shift, Hero. I believe they're all the same. Let's try to go to phone here. Pound, pound, three, four, two, four, pound. And yep, that opens up the DM command service menu there. You'll see it's installing drivers. And yep, those seem to be the right drivers. We're going to change the COM port. Um, if you only flash one or two devices, you'll probably have a, a low COM port unless you install a bunch of other stuff. Uh, we've worked with a bunch of different phones, so the default port was 80. For CDMA Workshop 2.7, you're going to be, need to be uh, below uh, port 26, so 25 or below. If you have uh, CDMA Workshop 3. Point whatever, you're going to have a lot more available COM ports. I just don't like all these COM ports to be filled up on my computer. So I install all my phones on 15. Let's me know that's being used by another device. That device isn't even plugged in. I only plug in one phone at a time to flash. So I hit OK. COM port will change to 15. Chances are it won't work right after that. So I just unplug the phone, plug it back in. If you're wondering what uh, case we have on this, it's the OtterBox uh, Defender. So DM command service should still be opened. We're going to use CDMA Workshop. Since it's a Sprint phone, we're going to need to get the SPC. We'll connect to COM15. We'll say connected successfully. We'll go over to security and hit read. Boom. There it is. On this device, it's 526-535. We're going to hit SPC, send. This will unlock the device. Then we'll make it something we can remember easily. It's gonna be zero 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 zero. My girlfriend's laughing at me right now because her picture's in the background. So feel free to chuckle. She's one of the super moderators on the forum. Now we'll hit right. Bam! Success. SBC successfully has been changed. It's good. We'll uh. Go ahead and close out a CDMA workshop. They'll ask us if we want to uh, reset the phone. You can go ahead and say no right now because we're going to just open it right back up in QPST. You'll notice that the signal has an X over it now. That's fine. No problem there. We'll go to service programming. The next step if you haven't flashed a phone is actually to go into QPST. And then go to the configuration. If you've never used this, you'll have to add a port. 
Jeez, it's 10 o'clock. I'm probably going to phone call without flashing the phone. Anyways, uh, sometimes you have to click this checkbox and show more ports. Anyways, select the device, hit OK. And then you can go down there, select it, and put service programming, and you'll get this. So click OK. Should open the device up. We'll hit read from phone. We already zeroed out the SPC, so we'll click OK. So first we'll go to the CDMA tab. Actually, here's where you want to save the original file. Go ahead and click save to file. We'll put, call it Evo 3D stock. Carrie, since this is going to be her phone. So that's all saved. We'll enter her phone number right here. Right here on IMSI underscore S, this is where you uh, enter your MIN. And your MIN is usually different from your phone number, unless it's a really old phone number. Don't worry about this IMSI down there. These should all be EVRC. They were like that uh, by default here. Remember, you got to enter your phone number first because if I make any changes right here, it's automatically going to change this. So if you have to change this, you got to go back and correct the I M S I underscore S. Moving right along, the next tab we go to will actually be Rome. We'll pick a PRL. Um, I'm going to go with my hybrid one. Let's see, 45722 hybrid. It has a uh, built in Sprint PRL. I'll be able to take the current PRL from the uh, Evo 3D based on the file we just saved earlier. Uh, I'll use RL Editor uh, for that. Yep, RL Editor. Um, we can go to display. If you want to say cricket instead of uh, sprint, that's fine. Let me just enter a little nickname for the device here. Next one is m.ip. Active user is zero, so it's going to be going off of this profile right here. Uh, sprint defaults it to mobile IP only. We're going to default it to simple. We're basing this on the Evo and the uh, Epic and the Shift. Uh, when they're set to Mo plus uh, simp fallback, it doesn't work or it throws up errors even though it does work. So we'll use simple IP only. Click this. We'll enter phone number at mycricket.com. Then the password is cricket. Cricket again. We'll zero all these out. That checkbox will remain there. I just don't edit things. I really don't know what they are or uh, they've already been pre-configured. PPP config is the last tab. We'll go to UM. Since this is a new device, there's nothing there. Tethered NAI, phone number at mycricket.com. Uh, user ID, phone number at mycricket.com. It does work prior password, which is cricket. We'll check both of these boxes based on what we've done on other phones. Then the user ID, phone number at mycricket.com. You won't be able to enter it there. Don't worry about that. And then cricket. And then we'll write it to the phone. The phone will probably reset on its own. It might throw up some errors. Don't worry about this. 
there's a way to disable NV on the uh, QBST, but it really doesn't matter. It won't pose a problem later. Now the phone is rebooting. This little error here, the warning is fine. Right here I'm making a folder called APN Backup Restore. I'm putting this uh, Cricut APN in there. It's Cricut. I'm calling it Cricut.xml. It has uh, all the acquired information. You can download that off of uh, the thread at mycricutforum.com. Now the device has rebooted. We're canceling the hands-free activation. We might have to bypass that later it could pose a problem. It's posed a problem on other devices. At this point the internet should already work because we're on the $55 plan. Since this phone does not have root available for it yet, it does have to go on the $55 plan. In the future it might work on the $45 plan. Uh, should we get root working? Let's try here. This will, uh, this will be based off of 3G. It's actually not coming up yet. Let's go ahead and move on to the APN portion of this. We're not installing it from the market in this case. We actually have it already uh, downloaded. We have to find a way to bypass the uh, hands-free activation. We'll probably have a uh, a video just for that one. So we're going to enable uh, USB debugging. It's in applications. From our computer, we're going to use the uh, ADB install command. Install that program. It's going to take a second for the proper drivers to install. They didn't install properly, so we're going to hit update driver, browse my computer, let me pick a list, show all devices, have disk. through that installation. And actually we're going to stop the uh, video right here since we'll run out of uh, YouTube time. So go on to part two to see the rest of the flashing of this device.